Hi, my name is Miss Christy. I'm a teaching artist with the PACE program. We integrate art lessons with the school curriculum. We're coming to you today thanks to the Acadiana Center for the Arts, the nonprofit organization that manages the PACE program, and the Lafayette Parish School System in Lafayette, Louisiana. Today we're going to be talking about coral reefs. The only materials you'll need for this project are paper, a pencil, and crayons. If you want to use other materials, you're welcome to, but today I'm going to just show you how to create a coral reef, and we're going to use all the colors that we can. Coral reefs are full of bright colors, whether it's the coral itself or the animals in the habitat that the coral creates. There are about 25 different kinds of coral in the family of coral, but there are 15, about 1,500 different species of coral. Coral might look like a plant, but it's actually an animal. They're tiny little polyps that grow an exoskeleton, or instead of bones on the inside, they create a bone on the outside that they can hide in and that other creatures can hide in. There are coral reefs all over the world. They are threatened by warming temperatures and overfishing. The corals we're going to create, we're going to use different colors to show the bright environment. We're also going to draw a few fish and a turtle in that environment. We're going to start by using a pencil just to draw in the basic area where the coral are going to be, but then we're going to use our crayons to draw the actual coral themselves. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is create the basic structure where our coral is growing. Start by drawing the basic structure. We're going to draw just a wavy line across this corner of the paper. Next, we're going to draw a kind of wavy line circle. Watch me first and then you try. I'm just going to kind of go around making a wavy line that's going to end up coming back together in a circle. And that's it. We're going to be creating coral in all this area. But first, let's draw a sea turtle in the middle as if it were swimming through a little tunnel. You're going to start by drawing a straight line that angles up toward the corner of the paper. Next, you're going to draw the sh back of the shell. We're going to draw in a small little head that's kind of an oval. And then we're going to put two flippers for the ones we can see on this side. We're going to put one here. Tur sea turtles have big flippers in the front and smaller flippers in the back. We can even give them a little tail. To draw the pattern on the back, every turtle has its own special pattern and every species of turtle has its own coloration and pattern. The basic shapes that you can create, you would use the letter Y. So you draw a V and then a line going down to the base of the shell and then connect another V to that one and align down. And you just keep doing that and you connect the Y's together. If you want to add more detail, you can create another one, a Y there that connects the base of each V part of the Y. And it also ends up creating kind of diamond shape.
Turtle also has a kind of pattern on his flippers. You can draw that in with some curved lines or you can just draw some straight lines. You can give him a little eye and a smile if you want to. There. So now let's draw in some coral. We're going to start with our pencil, but after a while, when you're comfortable with drawing coral and sea um, anemones, you'll be more comfortable to just go ahead and draw with your crayon. The first thing we're going to do is create a sea anemone down here. You're going to draw a rectangle that's the base of the anemone, and then it has those little tendrils or fingers like parts that come out, just like a jellyfish does. They're actually in the same group of animals as jellyfish and coral. You might be familiar with anemones from Finding Nemo, so we could even put a little fish in there. They have stripes. there he's sticking out. All right, so let's start using our crayons. So I'm going to color the base. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be trying to use as many different bright colors as we can. I like to combine colors and I always try to get my own kids and my art students to combine their colors to make new colors. At the top of every little tendril, you can put a little dot. And if you want to draw another one, you can. Maybe a smaller one by its side. So we're going to be filling in this whole thing. And we're starting with some smaller animals first, but then we're going to make some bigger ones. There. My little Nemo is kind of an orange and white. A lot of the coral are made of different structures of the of its on the top of its body. The coral itself seems like it looks like rock, but then growing all over the coral are other animals and other creatures that we're going to try and put in. So find a bright yellow or a, a green yellow, and we're going to make some structures that are going to be across this part right here. And the basic shape of them is like the letter C. And oftentimes these structures are in stacks or they grow together. And you're going to color those in. And usually you can see textures in these organisms, in these animals. So I'm going to take another color, like a brown, and I'm just going to put in some little spots. They often have one creature living on top of another. There are special little fish that live inside the coral. And they are very shy. And scientists have found that these are very important little creatures that live in the coral. So just keep creating your colors and textures on this type of organism. And then we'll move on to a new one. This one is going to grow a little bit upward toward the middle of the paper. You can draw it with your pencil if you want to, or you can just use a crayon. Use something different. So I used a red violet here, and then an, a light or, orange or um, a yellow here with a little 
brown spots, but this time I think I'm going to use red. So go ahead and find a red crayon or some, another warm color like red orange. So I'm going to use these two together. I'm going to just start at the bottom and I'm just going to create a kind of wavy line that goes up. If there's ever a point during this video that you need to press pause and catch up, please do so. Just finish the part that you're working on and then press play and we'll keep going. So after you draw a wavy line going up, we're going to go back down. And you can see that it's about as wide as my finger. And then I'm going to go back up and I'm just going to go a little bit higher and come back down. And so this whole structure is going to be red and the colors of the coral actually come from algae that lives on the coral. The different kinds of algae create the different colors. So I'm going to use my red orange inside the red to just create some added texture or stripes on the inside. You can even add another color, like maybe I'll add a little bit of green. Whenever we create artwork, we're trying to create variety. We're trying to create visual interest, which means you want to be able to keep the viewer looking around your artwork. So by using different colors in different areas, you're going to notice that your picture is much more interesting. So I've colored in this red coral. You can see it has like three fingers that sort of stick up out of the base of the coral. And we're going to move on to the next one. The next one, I like to call this one the lightning rod coral. It just has these kind of growth, the way that it grows is kind of jagged. So I'm going to draw it with my pencil just so that you can see it and then I'm going to color it in. And it's going to start right here. So I'm going to start with a base and you can even put a little dot. And I'm going to go up, over, up, and over. And so basically we're creating a zigzag line. And this coral grows out just like a zigzag line. And if you were going to use a light color, it's a good idea to draw it in with a darker color just so that it'll show. I'm going to color this one a light green. We have coral reefs here near the United States in the Gulf of Mexico by Florida. And the, this coral reef is down in the southern part of Florida near the Florida Keys. And all of the coral reefs actually protect the land when a storm comes in or a hurricane. So it not only protects us, but it protects the coastline from eroding. Erosion means washing away. So whenever you have your green, go ahead and color your sea turtle green. Greens and browns. A lot of sea turtles are actually endangered right now. Their habitats are being destroyed or they're being poisoned or caught in fishing nets. So they're a protected animal. I'm gonna put a little bit of brown in its shell. So 
the next type of coral, we're going to go up this way now. And this one actually kind of reminds me of daisies. And it's going to be two colors. So you need to choose one light color and one dark color. So if you were to choose the, like this green that I just drew with, then you would choose like a dark purple. We are going to be coloring this part, the color of the water, which would be turquoise. Usually corals happen in shallow water. And that's why you can see in these pictures that the water looks very light blue. And that's because coral doesn't grow in the deep part of the ocean. It grows in the shallow part of the ocean. So the colors I'm going to use are pink and orange. A light pink and a dark orange. So start by just creating some circles about as big as your fingernail. So not too small because then it'll be hard to create the second part of this coral. And don't put them right on top of each other. Spread them out just a little bit. And you're going to cover this whole area in those circles. So just keep filling it in with these polka dots. You can really go up the side of this coral with them. After you get the whole area filled in, we're going to be creating what kind of makes them look a little bit like daisies. So around each one of these, draw some, almost like they're suns, each one of them. Okay. So just go around each one of them. If you need to pause, go ahead. I'm going to fill this in. And then you would press play. Oh, I finished doing the orange spots around my pink circles and now I'm going to come back with a purple and I'm just going to put a little spot on the center of them. The next piece of coral that we're going to make will be right above it and it's going to look a little bit like seaweed. If you want to use green, go ahead. I'm going to use a different color. I'm going to use purple and I'm going to just start with a base. You can draw a little dot. It's going to be similar to this one, except it's not going to be a zigzag line this time. It's just going to be kind of like pieces of grass. So just a slight wavy line going up, maybe going out a little bit, some shorter pieces really long piece and then you're going to color those in and try not to create a blob Th this coral has very distinct features which means each one has its own special features and its own color that is created by the algae so they aren't really a blob of color. They're more these very interesting shapes. You'll notice that everything in nature is made of shapes. I'm going to add a little bit of that purple down here. Just to fill it in a little bit more. The next coral is going to be a little bit like a cactus. It's going to have a very similar shape to a cactus and it's going to have little dots on it. So pick a bright color and then a dark color to create those polka dot features. 
I'm going to use burnt orange, which is kind of a, a reddish brown color, and a metallic color that is bronze. And so this will be my dark color that I'll create some spots with. So right here, you're going to just draw similar to this shape, but it's going to have some pieces that go out and then back in and then go up and then maybe give it a little extra piece and go back in and then we're going to do another one go up and around and it's just kind of a winding line it doesn't have to be any certain way. You don't have to copy me, but I do want you to make those kind of wavy lines and then come back to the base of your piece of coral. So take your darker color and create some spots. And these spots are a little bit bigger than the ones I did down here just to make it so that it definitely looks like a different species of coral. Like I said earlier, there's over 1,500 different species. Coral have been on the earth in our oceans for over 400 million years. And depending on where the climate was perfect for them, which was shallow seas that aren't too hot and not too cold, they thrive where there's a, a strong current. So down around the bottom of Florida, there's the current between the Atlantic Ocean and the Gulf of Mexico. So there's a lot of coral that grows there and down into the islands around the Caribbean islands and the eastern side of Mexico. There, there's my next piece of coral. Now we're going to draw a different kind of coral. I'm going to use maybe a darker red for this one. And... and a little bit of green, of a darker green. So I'm going to draw that right here, and in the same manner that you drew kind of wavy lines, we're going to do the same thing, but it's shaped just a little bit different. You're going to start right here, again making a little point where that's coming out of the base of where our coral is growing, and you're going to go up, and over and back and to the left and back and to the left and then up, curl it around and then we're going to go over and back to the right and back and to the right again and then we're going to go back to the point where we started. And it's okay if you overlap another piece of coral it could either be behind this piece or in front of it. And I'm going to go ahead and color it behind this piece. So I would keep my color that I drew before handy so that I can color over what I drew. And then I would just go ahead and use this here. And you can use any colors you want. Try not to use the color of the water yet. We're going to use blue-green for the water. So for this, I'm going to add a little bit of this color here at the bottom. And then I'm going to add in some of my green. So these colors are mixed together because the coral itself has different things growing on it. Different algae. Okay, now let's draw some fish. So go ahead and if you want use your pencil 
It'll help you get the details of the fish before you color them in. We're going to draw a small school of fish right here. And fish are very, very simple in that they are kind of a, a football shape or a leaf shape. And then they have a little triangle tail. And so you can erase any pencil lines you might see there. And I'm going to draw another one over here. And maybe another one right here. And I'm giving it a little pointy nose like that. I'm going to put a fin on the top and the bottom. And then I'm going to give it a, a triangle fin in the middle of its body. You can give it its eyes and a little smile if you want. They are happy in their healthy coral habitat. Now some have stripes that go up and down like Nemo and some have stripes that go across its body side to side. Do you know what that's called when a line goes side to side? That's called horizontal horizontal lines or stripes. And I'm going to put some on its tail. And I'm going to color these a bright color. Let's see. We know that Dory in Finding Nemo was blue and Nemo was orange and white. So I'm going to color these guys a little bit blue, like sky blue. And then maybe another color like a gold. So I encourage you to look up some fish if you can. Try and find some real coral reef fish. They're, they come in a rainbow of different colors and patterns. All right, I think I'm gonna draw one more little fish down here, maybe a bigger one. So I'm gonna draw that same kind of football shape and then the tail. An eye, a triangle fin in the middle, and then a fin in the, on the back. You can put those stripes, a fin at the bottom. And with this one, let's see, I think I'll do some vertical stripes. Those are stripes that go up and down the body. And then maybe put a pattern of little circles inside each stripe. There. They really do have these features. All right, so we have color we've put filled in our coral and we've put in some creatures and our some um, some animals like fish and turtles. These are called vertebrates, animals that have a spine or a backbone. Animals like the coral and the anemones are invertebrates. They don't have a, a backbone or bones in their body. So I'm going to go ahead and color the water now, and we're going to use a blue-green. So find your blue-green colors. Usually a crayon box will have several, like cerulean blue, or turquoise blue, or blue-green. And you're going to color just this corner and just around your turtle. The other areas under your coral are going to be a kind of tan color. If you have a metallic gold, I recommend using that. I have one here, and it's a very good sandy color. So you're just going to color that gold or tan sandy color around everything that is the coral. 
But when you do your water, it's just going to be this area right here. I'm going to outline it so you can see. So that original line that I drew, that wavy line circle, is inside here is going to be turquoise blue, and out here is going to be turquoise blue. All of this is where the coral is living. So you can color that gold. So I'm going to fill this in. You go ahead and do the same thing. If you need to press pause, go ahead. The artist that I want to share with you is Jason DeCares Taylor. And he has created artwork under the water in these areas where coral can grow. And what he's done is he's created sculpture out of a special material that the coral can survive and thrive. You can see in these pictures that he created these figures of people and with a team he had these submerged or put under the water in these special places. And he found places where he knew that the coral would attach themselves and grow. And so what has happened over time is you can see in this picture the coral has started to take over the figures that are holding hands. So there's um, a sculpture here called Inheritance that is a little boy that is a sculpture. He's made out of cement and you can see that he's sitting on a bucket and he's looking down at a pile of trash. And what the artist is saying here is that he doesn't want to leave the children of the world with just trash in the ocean. He wants to leave them with the beautiful wildlife that lives in the ocean and a healthy ocean. So I admire this artist for trying to make the statement that our oceans are important and that they should be protected and taken care of. Over the years, the coral builds up to where it's like rock and it's one layer on top of another. And as it grows, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So like the Great Barrier Reef covers almost 3,000 miles of the coastline of Australia. And most of it is on the north west side of Australia. And they're finding that the coral is dying and bleaching. And when you, if you look it up, you'll find that there are whole areas where the coral has died. And they're saying that this is for several reasons, one of them being pollution. So it's really important that we protect these areas because not only do they help protect us on land when a storm comes in, but they're also finding that some of this coral and algae is actually has medicine benefits. That means that they can make medicines for us out of this coral. So there are scientists that are learning how to protect it and how to help, help it stay healthy. There are many different areas in the world that have coral and all of them are fighting to keep the coral alive. There, there's my coral reef. What do you think? Lots of different colors and you can, you can see that it's a healthy habitat. I wish I could see your coral reef. Share your work with us. 
You can go to the Acadiana Center for the Arts, Arts and Education page on Facebook and post your work. Or you can email it to us at our website at acadianacenterforthearts.org. We will be posting a new lesson every day at 10 a.m. Our lessons are geared towards kindergarten, first, and second grade, but we welcome anyone to join us. These lessons will also be shown on the Acadiana Open Channel, kindergarten at 8 a.m., and first and second grade at 9 a.m. These lessons are either visual arts or creative movement. If you are interested in private lessons with me, you can contact me at my website. That's lushceramics.com. Thank you so much for being with me for this lesson, and I hope you make art every day.